DFCRadio.com. Listeners, this is your buddy, Herb the Wizard, and I'll be ready in just a minute. Just let me find it on the dial. <laughs> Well, there we go. This is it. Get ready. We're going to start the show. Hey, kids, cats, gentle readers, and gentle listeners. My voice still isn't quite back yet, and most of the buds of the circle table are still laid up. I'm hoping this corrects soon, but in the meantime, here's another raspy voice episode of the Grow with Grubby Cup show. And now it's time to listen to a little bit of the wonderful and delightful Kelly Erickson currently playing with Teaser. He got some seeds to grow, he'll keep you in the know, variety to claim, so baby, what? Hello there, gentle listeners. This is your roving bard, Leaf Malone, reporting on the Grow With Grubby Cup show, brought to you by DFZ Radio at dfzradio.com. And here they are, the buds of the circle table. Oh, see, it is I, Sancho Banza. Good evening. I'm Alfred the Dungeon Keeper. Hi there, friends. This is the Irreverend Joe. And I'm Herb the Wizard. Psst. It's me, Vinny the Viper. The Sheriff of Riding Park. And I am your host, the Green Knight, Grubby Cup Stash. Thank you for joining us here on the Grow with Grubby Cup show. Brought to you by the good folks over at DFZ Radio at dfzradio.com. <clears throat> okay, first of all, I want to apologize to everybody because my voice still isn't back. Um, I, I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, this thing is just hanging on forever, and my my voice is, you know, it's better than it was, but it's it's still not back to my regular voice, much less my being able to do anybody else's regular voice. Um. So, just a, a couple of things. One, in a couple of weeks, the Max Shield show up by Seattle is going on. And I'm trying to work it out so that I get there. Um, the current plan is I'm going to catch a ride up and back with uh, my CO2 folks. So, a Big shout out and thank you to Donnie and Nikki from my CO2. So if you're going to be at the Max Shield show up in Seattle, um, coming up, give me a yell, say hi. Um, hopefully by then my voice will be back. Uh, I'd like to go to the show and get some more sound clips from various vendors and industry folks. And get the chance to see some folks and maybe show off the GrowTag Hydro Directory. Speaking of the GrowTag Hydro Directory, if you go over to grubbycup.com, you can check it out. 
on the front page. It's got a search for the hydroponic directory, so you can, or you know the search for the hydro shops and that. And if you don't find your favorite shop, let me know, and we'll make sure to get that added in. It also has a listing of upcoming events, such as the Max Yield Show and various hydroponic shop customer appreciation days. Uh, again, if your favorite hydro shop is having a customer appreciation day and they've got the dates in that set, let me know, and as soon as we can verify that, we'll we'll put that up on as well. And as a as an informational for those of you that may be in the hydroponic industry, sales reps and that on the back end of the directory is a hydroponic store sales rep visit bit of software so that you can easily make notes in that when you visit a shop so basically the the gist of it is that you you know when you're at the shop you can search the shop you know search for the shop in the in the program and click that you visited there and then you can add additional notes, and it'll run reports. It's got a to-do list. It has a, a way for you to email either to yourself or your supervisor a list of what you've been up to, all that sort of thing. Um, so if you're looking for a contact management type, bit of software that's geared for the hydroponic industry uh give me a yell and we'll we'll get you a demo and talk about it with you for those of you who aren't in the hydroponic industry or sales rep on the front page of the grubbycup.com site in cooperation with GrowTag and Smokey's Prize Pit, we're going to start running contests again. And the entry for it will be on the, you know, on the front page of the directory listing thing and my website at grubbycup.com. And now for an emergency moment of meditation. The preceding emergency moment of meditation was brought to you by Poppy Brand Catnip Buds. Remember, if you can't keep your pussy happy, Poppy's Buds will. That's Poppy's Catnip Buds. And now hopefully a few words from the irreverent Job. How they are for rams. How there to each and every one of you. This is the Irreverend Job. And I'm here to talk to you for a moment. I'm here to talk to you for a moment. Especially those of you in the back. I've come to talk to you a moment about the benefits of being selfish. Now I know what some of you are saying. I know that some of you in the back, you're saying it, Reverend Job. You're always saying to be nice to people. You're always saying, don't be an asshole. So now you're telling us that it's okay for us to be a little selfish. I'm not sure I heard you right. Your voice is kind of messed up right now. Well, for friends, well, for friends, I'm here to tell you that, yes, there's a particular kind of selfish that I advocate. 
Now let's say for a moment you're having a bad day. It ain't going, things ain't going your way, and it makes you a little bit grumpy. And because that happens sometimes, things will happen and you'll, you'll feel a little grumpy. And then along will come somebody who's got nothing to do with the reason that you're grumpy. And it is an unfortunate thing that what a lot of folks will choose to do with this is they will then suddenly become a very sharing person and they will share their shitty day with the other person. And I don't mean to say share in the way that you might, if you was having a little kumbaya rap session sharing where you're sharing your feelings because I think that's rather appropriate. You can tell people I'm feeling grumpy and there's nothing wrong with that. It's when you just be grumpy at people that you you wind up with some issues. So you're having a bad day and you're grumpy to an innocent bystander and you'll share your bad day. So now they're having a bad day because they had to deal with you. And if they are that same sort of person, then they may go and share that bad day with a bunch of other people by just generally being an asshole and being grumpy because you were an asshole to them. And unfortunately, being an asshole kind of spreads like some sort of fungal rot disease. I think the world would be a bit better place if a lot more people would just fess up to the fact that what they're feeling is frustrated because they're not getting their way about something. Instead of just acting all pissed off, you can just come right out and admit what's going on. You can say, well, what I wanted to have happen was I wanted to milk the cow without incident. And she kicked me in the shin and it hurt like a song, bitch. And that makes me unhappy and a bit grumpy because I'm in pain and if I had my way, I wouldn't be in pain. Y'all don't need to be kicking over the the milk pails and the stools and the causing the big fuss and ruckus. And so I'm going to advocate that instead you act a little bit more selfishly and you understand that if you help other people have a good day, if you help other people be happy, well, then you have a day filled with happy people, and that's a that's a much nicer day than when you got to deal with assholes because you all know it only takes one really good asshole, and they can screw up a big chunk of your day, and so... You know, if you want to look out for number one, then you ought to make sure that those people around you are being happy and they're having a good day and they're having a good life. So you wind up with a life full of happy people and you can be as selfish as you want to be about that because we can argue about the nitpicky details after we wind up figuring out how to cure that whole asshole problem. This has been the Irreverend Job, and I wish each and every one of you a wonderful week. You're listening to the Grow with Grubby Cup show. I'm your host, Grubby Cup Stash. You're listening to us on DFZRadio.com. DFCRadio.com
Hi, and welcome to Nonspecific Hydro. Yeah, hey, I have a buddy of mine that was telling me about a great additive. Okay, do you remember the name? Uh, yeah, his name's Steve. He's a good buddy. No, no, the product. No, he told me it was a super concentrated organic enhancer. Comes in a yellow bottle. Well, it sounds like he's talking about Florilicious Plus from General Hydroponics. I don't think that was the name, but he also told me it was a vegan bioplant stimulator that contained vitamins, plant sugars, amino acids, seaweed extract. Yeah, that would be General Hydroponics Florilicious Plus. I don't think that's it, man. He told me it was something like Dora Vicious Flush or something, and he said it was like an organic supplement that could also be used in vegging or flowering and that it was compatible with hydro soil and cocoa. Yes, that would be General Hydroponics Florilicious Plus. Oh, hey, man. I just remembered what it's called. It's Florilicious Plus. Oh, good. I was drawing a blank. Florilicious Plus from General Hydroponics. Ask for it by name. Your garden's looking far out. You must listen to dfzradio.com. back. You're listening to the Grow with Grubby Cup show. I'm your host, Grubby Cup Stash. You're listening to us on the DFZ Radio Network at dfzradio.com. Hello, gentle listeners and all the ships at sea. This is your wandering bard, Leaf Malone. And now it's time for... Meals and Munchies! Would you wizard your grubby cup? I'm feeling kind of hungry. So what are we making today? No, I'm not making anything this week. Are you kidding? Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about not making stuff. And cool ways you could do that. For example... Um, I'm very lucky because here La Mancha is a very multicultural city and we have a very cool international market just down the lane. And if you have a, in your area, if you've got small ethnic markets or, you know, international markets, um, I highly recommend that you go and you check them out because it's a it's good for you culturally for the exposure and they have some cool weird food in other places and um it can be a really entertaining experience. The international market by me is it's gigantic. It's, you know, it's Mega shop, Wally universe kind of place. Um, and they have a, a huge variety of food, a lot of which doesn't have a whole lot of English writing on it. And it can be a really fun and cool experience to go through and get, you know, snack foods from foreign lands. And to try new things and to to explore. Uh, I think a lot of people tend to, you know, they find a couple of favorites and they keep eating those over and over again. And there are a lot of interesting and cool things to try. Not all of which are indigenous to wherever you grew up. And some of the food that you're going to try from different lands is going to just be wretched. It is. Yeah, I'm not going to lie to you. Um, One of the things I found out is I found a lot of things I didn't like. 
Um, and that's okay. That's cool. It's it's. I'm a big fan of the try it once. If you don't like it, then you never have to try it again type attitude. Because in between finding the stuff that you really don't like, you're going to find stuff that's interesting and stuff that's cool and stuff that's, you know, you, you want to have again. And then every now and then you're going to run into that true gem. You're going to run into something that you really enjoy. And the only way that you're ever going to find those, you know, those new gems is to try new things. And, you know, and this, this goes along with food and goes along with a lot of things. It, you have to be open to exploring things and thinking about things in order to get, you know, a handle on things, to grok it, so to speak. Um, for example... I do a lot of talking about holistic systems and that on the show. And with the Irreverend Job stuff in that, it's in part because a garden or any living system is just that. It's a system. And it's the synergy between the parts that will allow a plant to grow. And some of these observations and some of the things that you can learn in the garden, you can apply to life and vice versa. Um, if you have a plant and you want that particular plant to do well and grow, then you need to take care of it, and you need to protect it. And that's the same that's true for people as well. For example, in a, in a garden you pay a little extra love and care to your seedlings or your cuttings because this is a very tender part of their development. And if you don't take care of them when they're little, then you're not going to get a good harvest when they get bigger. So as a gardener, you know that the little ones need a little extra care if you want to see them make it to being a full-size plant. Um, and something that I think we forget as, as people is that same thing applies with, you know, with our little sprouts. If we don't take proper care of them when they're little, then they're not going to grow up into the sort of people that we want in this world. And there's also a feeling of that once you're an adult, you shouldn't need, you know, any help anymore. Um, and there are many you know, trees in that that are in gardens that are well cared for, intended for, and they could be allowed to just be left on their own and grow wild, but they will benefit from some additional care throughout their life. And again, people are the same way. Learning uh, and studying botany um, led me into, you know, studying some on fungus, which led to, you know, a couple things. You know, it, I really like yeast because 
Yeast makes bread. Yeast makes alcohol. Yeast makes CO2. Yeast makes a lot of cool stuff. Um, but again, it there, there are lessons to be learned. If you take, you know, if you take a jug and you put some water and some sugar and some yeast to it, what the yeast will do as a natural part of its, you know, of what will happen is the yeast will consume the sugar and nutrients out of the solution until the it excretes, you know, it poos, whatever, enough alcohol that it fouls the, you know, that it basically dies in its own poo. Because it eats the sugar, it makes alcohol. When the alcohol level gets too high, the yeast dies. And part of what I find very interesting about this is that if the yeast had a brain, if the if the yeast had thought, then the yeast would have the choice or it would have the ability to say, Hey, you know what? If I just made myself and, you know, a f- small family, then there's enough resources here for us to live for years and years. And that the reason that that you know once yeast is in that scenario in the scenario of being in with the sugar and the water and that it it's pretty much doomed that because it lacks the self control to modify its behavior it will eat all the sugar until it kills itself um or runs out of sugar, whichever comes first. <clears throat> Nature isn't always the the best way. Um, however, a lot of the the man made stuff that we're doing is also, you know, it's it's very self destructive. And it's not viable in the long term. Um, we're getting better and better and better at making ways to kill people. We are not getting a lot better at developing socially to the point where we don't kill people. Um, and in the long run, that's just not going to work. Because... You know, we get better at killing people and we're not learning the skills to refrain from using it. Eventually, a lot of people are just going to get hurt. Anyway, time for commercials and we'll be back with a new topic. You're listening to the Growth Groby Cup show on DFC Radio at dfzradio.com. FCRadio.com Hey, brah. Have you seen the new kind nutrient from Botanicare? It's kind of a big thing. Uh, no. What's up with that? Well, I was totally pulling a Dawn Patrol, chilling with some honeys, when this troll is like, Yo, I heard your garden is total weak sauce. And I was like, as if, my garden is hella gnarly and bodacious. And then he was like, Brah, if you want your stuff to be like Mondo Narnar, you need to hook up with Botanicare's kind nutrients. Okay, would you be so kind as to tell me what you're talking about? Only the most bitchin' nutrients to shred a grow since the invention of water, bruh. Kind is on the serious, bruh. There's one part base, one part grow, and one part boom. 
kind is super rad because it's completely customizable so you can use it with any type of plant and medium, brah. And what's wicked, boss, is that the proprietary kind formulas eliminate the need to add separate calcium and magnesium supplements to compensate for water quality or specific grow medium. Uh, rad. That sounds like my kind of base nutrient. Totally. And Con Grow has all these primo minerals and like super top secret blend of natural stuff so you can get a seriously lush canopy, right? And with the kind bloom, you get like this major hookup of phosphorus and potassium, but like in a totally righteous proportion so you get increased biomass and flower initiation. And what's even more awesome is you can adjust the levels of base, grow, and bloom to meet the needs of your medium, plants, and grow stage. You could say it's for any kind you grow. It's totally sweet. It was very kind of you to tell me about this. So I should like totally hop in my woody and cruise down to my local hydro hookup and score some kind nutrients from Botanicare? Like what? New from Botanicare. Kind base, grow, and bloom. The fully customizable line of nutrients developed for the modern grower. For more information, contact your local hydro store or go online to Botanicare.com. What kind will you grow? Your garden's looking far out. You must listen to DFZRadio.com. Welcome back. You're listening to the Grow with Grubby Cup show. I'm your host, Grubby Cup Stash, and you're listening to us on DFZRadio.com. How they are for rounds. This is the Irreverend Job, and I just want a few moments of your time, if I may. Now, there are some places that I believe show an inordinate display of stupidity and that's that's those places where they have installed anti-homeless people spikes in doorways and such so that the homeless people don't collect there and I gotta tell you folks that's gotta be one of the most asshole things I've heard of in a while. And my issue with it, friends, is that effectively what this means is somebody said, hey, there's a person there and circumstances for them are so rough that they're thinking that sleeping in that alleyway is a good idea. Now, instead of helping a person, their solution to this is to put in spikes to make it uncomfortable for the person to do that so that the person doesn't do that and they go someplace else. And to me, folks, I got to say, that's just an asshole thing to do. Anyway, um, just in case there's anybody still listening, I want to talk briefly about... A uh, completely different topic. Um, what I want to talk about it is a simple Mendelian trait, um, because there's a there's a lot of confusion about this, and once it's one of those things where until it clicks in your head, it's confusing. But then once it clicks, it just makes sense. In every plant. For every trait, 
And by trait, um, it, it's a genetic trait. It's something that is inherited from parent to offspring. And you can do, you know, these can be things like um, leaf color or leaf shape or, you know, f petal color, that sorts of things. Um, so to keep it simple, we're just going to do red and white, red flowers and white flowers. And in our example, we've got our hypothetical plant and each plant is going to have um, two alleles for each trait. So, for example, in our red and white flower um, example, hypothetical example here, it may have a with the with the two alleles it's going to have one of four different combinations right it's either going to inherit red from the mother and red from the father so the alleles will both be for red or it will have a get a red allele from the from one parent and the white and the allele from the other parent um or the reverse of that, it may get a white from one and a red from the other one. Or it could have two white alleles, um, where it gets a white one from the mother and a white one from the father. And that gives us our four combinations. And if something is going to be true breeding or homozygous for a trait, that means that it either has both alleles red or both alleles white. Because if it if they're both red, then the flower is obviously going to be red. If they're both white, then the plants also or then the plant flower color will be white. And with a lot of the talk about the dominant and recessive, what the, what the dominant and recessive characteristic basically means is that it's which one wins a tie. So, for instance, in our example of our four combinations, the red, red, red will get you red, red, white, or white, red, the two in the middle if red is dominant, then since they each have a red and white, if red is dominant, then the plant, then the what the flower will wind up being is red. Um, it's a it's a switch, an all or nothing thing. So you, that's not how you get pink, for example. Um, it'll either be red or white, and because the dominant is whatever one wins a a tie in our in our example we've got the two red red and white white if red wins both the red white and the white red combinations then that means that all three of those will wind up red and the only one that will show white, if white is a recessive trait, is where it shows up as being white, white. Um, and that's that's the basics of what, what dominance means. Is It basically means that if it's a tie, which one wins? Um, and the same one wins all ties. Now, there's certain ramifications to this that are beyond what's obvious. For example, it means that if you have one parent that is 
red, red, and you have another parent that is white, white, then all of the offspring will have a, will have the red flower because they will get a red from one parent because because since the parent is true breeding for that trait, because they're, you know, homozygous, then no matter which allele it gets from that parent, it'll be the red one. And the same with the white. If it's a, if it's a white, white plant, then no matter which allele it gets from that parent, it'll be a white one. So all the offspring will have one red and one white. Since we said red was dominant, red wins ties, all the offspring will be have the red flowers. And this is what's called a hybrid. Um, and there are some nice things about hybrids. One of the nice things about hybrid is they tend to all look the same. Um, or, you know, reasonably close to it. Now, where you can run into some, some interesting things, however, is when you make seeds from that hybrid. Because then you have a parent, each with a red and a white, for their alleles. So, they can combine in a variety of ways. You can get, you know, double red, you can get red white, you can get white red, or you can get white white. And from this union, what you'll wind up with is 75% of the population ish will be red and 25% will be the white colored flowers. Um, one nice thing about recessives is that then if you breed two of the white flowered plants together, all of their offspring will be white flowered and all of their offspring will be white flowered because since you only have a group that are white, white on their alleles, there is no red that can contaminate it and recombine and show up. So it will just be true breeding and continue to be true breeding, um, you know, from then on out. On the dominant trait, however, it's not the same situation because in the, in the dominant, keep in mind that if it's red, red, then it's true breeding for it. And the flower will show up red. But because it wins all ties, all red white will also show up red. And you can't tell the difference between it and a red red plant by looking at it, what have you. And so not only do all the red reds show up red, all the red white show up red. And all the white reds will show up red. So even though in the, the hybrid generation, you'll, they'll all be red, in the one following it, only 25% will be true breeding for red, and it will be mixed in with the other you know, with another half, because um, you have 25% at the end um, for the whites, that aren't pure, but will still display the the characteristic, the, the red characteristic. Um, and so... Basically, what you what you have to do is you play odds with them. You keep breeding with them and playing with them until white quits showing up, um, which is why dominant traits are substantially harder to stabilize than recessive traits are and how traits will skip a generation and recombine later.
The Grow with Krabby Cup show is brought to you by Grow With Us Hydroponics. If you're in the Rhode Island Warwick area and you need some hydroponic supplies, stop on by at Grow With Us Hydroponics. Tell them Grubby sent you. Speaking of the Rhode Island, New England area, if you happen to be in the Rhode Island, New England area, stop off at Grow With Us Hydroponics, Home and Hydro, or Three Guys Hydroponics, all of which are very fine stores in the Rhode Island area, all of which are carrying Grubby Cups potting mix. If you are in New York, make sure to stop off at Harvest Moon Hydroponics in Buffalo and in Rochester. You're listening to the Grow with Grubby Cup show. I'm your host, Grubby Cup Stash. You're listening to us on DFZRadio.com. Your garden's looking far out. You must listen to DFZRadio.com. Hi, and welcome to Nonspecific Hydro. Yeah, hey, I have a buddy of mine that was telling me about a great additive. Okay, do you remember the name? Uh, Yeah, his name's Steve. He's a good buddy. No, no, the product. No, he told me it was a super concentrated organic enhancer. Comes in a yellow bottle. Well, it sounds like he's talking about Florilicious Plus from General Hydroponics. I don't think that was the name, but he also told me it was a vegan bioplant stimulator that contained vitamins, plant sugars, amino acids, seaweed extract. Yeah, that would be General Hydroponics Florilicious Plus. I don't think that's it, man. He told me it was something like Dora Vicious Flush or something, and he said it was like an organic supplement that could also be used in vegging or flowering and that it was compatible with hydro soil and cocoa. Yes, that would be General Hydroponics Florilicious Plus. Oh, hey, man. I just remembered what it's called. It's Florilicious Plus. Oh, good. I was drawing a blank. Florilicious Plus from General Hydroponics. Ask for it by name. DFCRadio.com Welcome back. You're listening to the Grow with Grubby Cup show on DFC Radio at dfzradio.com or on YouTube. And welcome back. Um, just to to finish up a little bit on the, the talking about genetics, um, I would highly recommend if you're interested in it, get something with a with a known um, Mendelian trait and do it yourself Um, because seeing it, you know, reading about it or listening to me talk about it or, you know, learning about it doesn't quite have the same effect as being able to actually put this into practice and seeing it happen. Um, and keep in mind that it's, a, it's all probabilities. Um, so even though there's a, you know, there's a 75% chance of this and a 25% chance of that doesn't necessarily mean that out of four plants, three of them are absolutely going to be red and one of them is absolutely going to be right. 
white um, because it's a it's a probability thing and where doing large numbers helps is that the larger your sample size the closer the numbers are going to wind up being what you what they mathematically should be um and I, i've talked about that before and i won't go into it now but th there's there's math involved but it's it's one of those the bigger the sample size you have the more likely events are to be you know what the what they probably are <laughs> once again um putting together um uh, i should be at the seattle max yield show hopefully my voice will be back and i am going to try to get uh several interviews while i'm out and about on the road so you can hear from different folks from the industry and I want to give a big shout out to the MyCO2 folks. Um, sounds like we'll be we'll be doing a, a little something together here coming up. And as always, thank you each and every one of you, gentle listeners. Um, I really apologize for about the past month or so. This thing just keeps hanging on. Um, I, I, as soon as I am able, we will do some extra cool zany stuff with all the knights of the, all the buds of the circle table rather. And thank you for tuning in until next time. This has been your host, the green knight, grubby cup stash, which each and every one of you peace, love and puka shells. We got some seeds to grow, who keep you in the know. Variety to claim, so baby, what's the name? He's a man to know. He'll make your garden grow. Grab your cups, his name. He's the man who make a change. Your garden's looking far out. You must listen to DFZRadio.com.